In the wake of lifestyle changes occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said it will be using more technological tools in discharging its mandate, disclosing its resolve to pioneer electronic voting in the country by 2021. This was as the electoral umpire decried the rising cost of elections in the country, saying it would be liaison with the National Assembly to see how political parties can nominate replacements for dead representatives in line with the Supreme Court judgment that votes belong to the parties and not individuals. INEC disclosed this in a 17-page document released on Monday in Abuja, tagged policy conducting elections in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic and signed by its chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. Joining us in the studio is Liberos Oshoma, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for coming on the news. My pleasure. We also have joining us um, virtually is the INEC Director of Photo Education and Publicity, Oluwale Osaze Uzi. Thank you very much for your time on the news. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. So the 17-page document uh, your um, organization released is largely good news, some persons say, especially looking at the plan to uh, resolve, uh, to pioneer electronic uh, voting in the country by 2021. Um, what led to all of this and how do you plan to ensure um, it becomes reality? Well, quite honestly, the essence of this document, as the title suggests, suggests is that it's a policy document to deal with uh, the conduct of elections and electoral activities in the wake of the corona uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic. So it's not really, uh, the offshoot of it is this issue of, um, of electronic voting. Electronic voting is not the essence, not the kernel of that document. That document speaks mainly to the conduct of elections in a, in a time of a pandemic. Um, the fallout, or tangentially related to that, is the issue of electronic voting. And that is not anything new. Um, it's something that was submitted to the National Assembly as at the time of uh, constitutional reform uh, in the last cycle of the last uh, parliament. So it's nothing new, but it's something we're working towards. We've been working towards for quite a while, and hopefully it will culminate in the introduction of electronic voting come 2021. Okay, let's get uh, Liberos' uh, opinion on this. What's your take on uh, what he just uh, clarified now, that the focus is not on uh, the um, election, I mean, the electronic voting, yeah. but on the pandemic management? Yeah, I, I completely agree with him, um, because um, I am also aware that after every election, INEC does what they call um, um, a retreat to review the election and then after such reviews you usually come up with a policy document on how to manage subsequent election because um, um, with each year you see INEC you know improving on election the conduct of election and electoral management that was how you know that was what even led to INEC um, using card readers for elections you know and you know the improvement we have seen um, I like the fact that um, you know because it's Something that had been at the top burner, and that's why a lot of people are talking about electronic voting, and then also um, on replacement, cancellation of by-elections, um, replacement of uh, candidates. That, although that's going to be a tough one, I know opposition party would, um, you know, seriously contest that one. But um, they ha also had said it's in line with the Supreme Court decision in Amici and Omeya that um, heard that um, the uh, votes belong to the political party. And, uh, but the question would now be, you, you know, if a candidate dies, can you still, in all honesty, still say that, you know, the vote belongs to the political party uh, against the backdrop of the, the fact that the candidate that the party had feeded, you know, you know, had died. So those are the issues. But I, I like, generally, I, I like the recommendations. Um, Mr. Osaze. Let me come back to you on the issue of the by-elections um, on the heels of the Supreme Court ruling. What has been the reaction uh, by parties so far? Well, again, this is not something that is new. Um, it is part of the proposals made by the uh, INEC to the National Assembly when, at the, at the time, uh, when we the process of conducting uh, a review of uh, the constitutional provisions. And it's something we probably will propose to the National Assembly. 
We'll put the, uh, the document, we'll put the suggestion before the public. We'll discuss this with political parties. We're also meeting with political parties uh, this morning. It may be something that will uh, arise out of our discussions. But basically, it's this. Rightly or wrongly, the law of the land now, and the Supreme Court, as uh, the world said, the Supreme Court has said votes belong to political parties. Now, if it's a governor, you elect a deputy to step in if anything happens to him, where there's a vacancy in the seat of uh, governor of a state. If anything happens to the president, he's unable to discharge his responsibilities or duties. If anything happens to him, automatically you don't conduct another election. You go ahead to, to, to swear in the vice president. That's so true. basically, that is one way of looking at things. There is a specific and tenure. And when a house is inaugurated, a legislative house, it should be for four years. And when you give your mandate to a political party or to a candidate, it's a tenure of four years. So why do you truncate that tenure and then not uh, conduct a by-election. It's very expensive. As I speak, uh, we lost another member of the State House of Assembly, I think it was yesterday. So there are so many outstanding. We have five senatorial elections and counting arising out of uh, uh, vacancy, not even halfway, less than a quarter way through their tenures. We have two in Bielsa arising out of the uh, swing of uh, the deputy governor and the governor, no, both of them senators. We have one in Plata rising out of death. On some, we have one in Cross River. We have one in Imo rising out of death. So these are central elections. And when you look at the thing, in total, the by-election we have to conduct, well over 6 million uh, registered voters will be involved. That is more than the voting population of three, four West African countries. So it's an expensive venture. It's, uh, and this is the time we start to look at things like cost of elections. How do we manage elections? Elections have to be cost-effective. Because you cannot uh, take all your resources and put into the conduct of elections. These are the reasons why we... But naturally, like every other thing, some people will be for it and some people will be against it. But I think it's a conversation we have to start. I want to look at it. There must be other ways. And it's not unique to Nigeria. But that proposal, in the U.S. has something like that. Recall when Barack Obama assumed the presidency. He's sitting in the Senate. Had to be, um, I think, in your own case, I think it was the governor who appoints somebody to take over that seat for a reminder of a tenure. Different states have different um, approaches to it. So let us consider, all consider, what do we do for Nigeria? But this system of conducting by elections every time a vacancy arrives is not just the best. I'll give you another example. All right. When uh, um, uh, there's an uh, election. Yeah. Okay, uh, let, let's just uh, wrap things up with uh, your thoughts on some of the challenges, um, uh, Vice President Boris, some of the challenges that could come up with an implementation of, you know, this idea that's uh, being muted by INEC? Um, I, I basically, like I said, it's not, um, it's, the challenge would be that, um, you know, those in opposition would think that, you know, political parties who are in power would want to use it to perpetuate themselves in office. But like, um, um, Osaze has said, it is uh, something we really need to, um, it's a discussion we need to have. Um, it's it's not um, it's not novel, just like he also pointed out in in uh, the presidential e election for governorship and um, uh, uh, the president. You have um, alternate candidate that we call the deputy governor or the dep uh, vice president. So in the same vein, you, you know the political party also can have alternate candidates, not necessarily on the ballot like a deputy senator. Yeah, but well, well, I'm, I'm looking at some event. of the hurdles. What could it, be the likely hurdles to an implementation? Because it, it's not a new idea, no, no, like both of you yeah. have said. But what is stopping it from being a part of our reality? Oh, the, the, the problem we have now is that there needs to be a constitutional amendment to have it you know, included. Okay. But whether the uh, uh, lawmakers will accept it. just the same way we have been talking about electronic voting even though you know most of uh, most part of the world had em embraced electronic voting but we are still debating it you know so that's you know one of the major hurdles whether the lawmakers will accept it or not that's one hurdle and then also i know political parties especially those in opposition will oppose it as um, as as a tool to keep you know uh, the ruling party perpetually in office but really outside all of this i think it's a welcome development i think we need to amend our constitution considering the reality of the pandemic and the innovations that we have had to achieve i think also we immediately need to amend some of our laws the constitution and electoral laws to embrace some of these issues we don't need to wait until another pandemic before for us to realize that we ought to have done this you know now that the opportunity is right
All right, um, let's wrap up with you, uh, Mr. Osaze. The, the idea is beautiful and all of that. What are you hoping to um, see? What are the what is the reception you expect to see from people in accepting electronic voting um, when it does come uh, to reality? Well, let us realize, first of all, that quite honestly, it's not a silver bullet. Um, there still will be certain worries and certain challenges that uh, we must overcome. Cybersecurity is one of those things. And electronic voting being proposed now is not the same thing as uh, online voting. Um, because um, people think that, oh, eventually we might get there to where you can use your smartphone, your tablet, and put the comfort of your house or office or wherever you are in the world. We may get there, but that's, that is the last stage of the thing. Um, we expect that people, it's something people have been clamoring for. Nigerians seem to want uh, electronic voting. Any, any idea that there should be less human interference seems to be welcome to Nigerians. And the, the world is moving on. Nigeria must face. Technology is where you go. It's where to go to. And uh, we cannot afford to lag behind. So I think it's a welcome thing. People have spoken very, very uh, seriously about it and um, uh, and clamored for it. So it's something that we must welcome. Our laws must keep pace with the demands of the Nigerian society. But we must also have the infrastructure in place. We must also uh, be prepared to overcome challenges. They're surmountable. We have to prepare for them. And we've been preparing for a, lot, a long time. We have an electronic register of voters. We have electronic accreditation. We can easily have electronic transmission of results. So the last phase of that, the electronic voting, I think it's something Nigerians want. All right. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you. And of course, Barstel Burst, thank you. I'll be back with you in a bit. My pleasure.